Hi there. As we motor our way towards the very end of June, the first flush of flowers is very nearly done here in the garden. A lot of you are turning your attention to my maintenance regime, especially feeding of roses grown in pots or in the ground. So I just thought I'd do this small tutorial and talk you through the stages of how I keep my roses going all the way through now to the very, very back end of the season. Many of you will know that I don't feed my roses in the ground with anything at all. I'm relying very heavily on the mulching regime that I've installed over the last five or six years to make sure my soil condition is in as perfect health as possible and the soil has absolutely everything it needs to make sure my plants perform really well. However, I fully understand if you've recently moved into a garden, you maybe haven't kept up with your mulching or maybe you've built a new build house with really sandy and stony soil that needs improvement. You might not feel as confident about this as I do. So you can go ahead and feed your roses as soon as they've moved through their first flush and treat them like I do my potted roses here in the North Lodge Cottage Garden. A lot of you talk to me about different tonics and different fertilizers that are available. There's only one product I'm ever going to endorse and it's this one. This is from Envy. This is their Sea Feed Extra. I use this absolutely everywhere in the garden for lots of things that this particular product isn't actually suggested for, including feeding my house plants. All I do is adjust the quantities and the concentration depending on what I'm actually feeding. At the moment, we're going to be feeding, foliar feeding, not only roses in the ground, but also in pots. We're going to be doing those every two weeks now. As a, uh, as a general rule, I'm going to be adding 20 millilitres, which is an entire canister, uh, a, a top canister here, filled up to the very brim into a 10, sorry, a 20 litre watering can. If you plan to foliar feed, you're going to want one with a really decent rose on it. Every time I talk about this particular watering can and its rose, it gets lots of attention, get lots of messages saying, oh, goodness me, it's very expensive. There's no doubt about it that this particular horse watering can is a huge investment and it's rose, but it's well worth it. This particular watering can will last you 5, 10, 15 years, depending on how you look after it and what you do with it. So well worth it and a beautiful piece of kit. You can't foliar feed plants properly without a really decent watering rose. It needs to have a nice fine uh, hole on it to make sure the plant is properly doused. And at the moment, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing 20 millilitres of the Enfeed Sea Feed Extra into the watering can. We're going to be watering it on. Things like sweet peas. If you want to grow sweet peas like I do, I'm really going to show off now. Look at the stems on these. This is what sweet peas for me are all about growing them slow and steady to make sure that we have show quality stems. We want them at least, I'll put these down, uh, stems on them at least 12 to 18 inches long for show quality. And that's done by growing them slow and steady. Sweet peas, now every time they're picked, this can be up to three times a week, they're gonna have a foliar feed. So I'm gonna take my watering can with 20 millilitres of the Enfeed, NVC feed extra mixed into it, and I'm going to douse the entire plant, get the entire plant drenched with it. They're going to absorb an awful lot of the iron in the sea feed extra directly through their leaves, and that's gonna help give them the energy. Every single time you pick a bunch of sweet peas, you now should be feeding. If you see any yellowing whatsoever on your sweet peas, you're losing the fight and they're actually going to be going over and you're going to be pulling them out sooner than necessary. So you should want to be feeding very, very heavily now. Every single time you pick, you want to be feeding. It's the same with dahlias. I'm several weeks away from picking any dahlias in the garden whatsoever at the moment, but as soon as they start to crop and I'm picking every couple of days, they'll be receiving a feed every couple of days, completely drenched over the leaves. With regards to roses and things like tomato plants, you can see I've got a, uh, uh, I've got Emma Bridge water just off to my right here and a tumbling tomato. All I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the Envy Seafeed Extra. I'll do it with a tap now. Give the pot a really good shake because it can be a little bit on the thick side. Remove the cap and all you need to do is simply squeeze the container and it will fill the top chamber just here up to 20 millimetres. So I'm going to do 20 millilitres to 10 litres of water. That goes straight into the watering can. Depending on what your uh, setup like, I'm now already running out of water, but water, so I'm using tap water, which is absolutely fine. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna fill that up. Roses that are in pots are now gonna be starting to be fed 
every two weeks. You want to make sure that when you're feeding plants, you never feed a plant that's dry, especially if it's in a container. You want to water the plant properly first, maybe allow it 12 to 24 hours, and then do your feeding afterwards. If you do feed a plant that's dry, the, the likelihood is you're actually going to scorch the roots with a concentration of feed that's far, far too strong. It's gonna suck up far too much at once and you uh, actually uh, can damage it quite badly. So what you want to do is make sure you give it a really good water first, allow it 12 to 24 hours and then feed it uh, the day afterwards. Bowler feeding is really easy. So taking your watering can, all you're going to do is you're simply going to drench the entire plant with water, getting that foliage really nice and wet. Same for things like tomatoes. I do this with the dahlias, I do this with the sweet peas, I do this with peas all over the garden. Even things like pumpkin and squash are gonna be watered like this. Once you've got the plant completely doused and everything's wet, you can remove the rose and then you can give it a thoroughly good drink. Same quantity of water you would normally give the pot, something in the region of about 12 to 14 litres at once is normally ideal. A really, really good drink and for potted roses or roses in the ground that you're not confident of your mulching, you can go ahead and you can start this regime every fortnight now. You can see, give that a really, really good drink. There are lots of other products on the market. Uh, there is something about the way MV is produced that I really like. It's not only fully organic, uh, it's also harvested at the right time. The environmental impact of this product is really very low. So this is the only one I'm ever going to suggest you'd use, apart from, as I say, upping your mulching and making sure your soil condition is in really good health. I don't, as I say, feed any of the roses that are in the ground. I'm relying very heavily on the contents of my soil to march them forward with everything they need. Obviously, I've spoken about it before, but we are fully irrigated here. So I don't have any watering problems whatsoever. The water is delivered onto the surface of the soil and goes straight down. Uh, and there's no problems with spraying water on top of the soil or things drying out in the ground. But this is every, what I use everywhere in the garden in different varying quantities, whether it's feeding sweet peas, whether it's pumpkins and squash, whether it's lettuce, whether it's roses, whether it's dahlias, everything I grow in the garden is fed here by Seafeed Extra from Envy. I hope you found today's tutorial useful. I'll see you all again very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.